Hey everyone, I'm back with my art making tutorial for the cover art for my debut album, The Blink of an Eye. And I've got it here in a little miniature form so that I don't have to try and remember it from memory because some of my artwork gets really complicated and trying to do that will probably result in a huge disaster. So I decided not to try that. And this one looks quite complicated but that's really because it is. I think the original image for this, because I've got it in PNG here so I can't cheat and just think oh what did I do on this layer? I think the original image was like 10 layers or something which was a lot when I started doing the artwork for this album but now because it was quite a long time ago that I actually did that artwork it's sort of average. In any case, let's start by making a background. And background, this is black, so... There we go, that's black. And if I can select the right tool, let's fill it in. Thank you very much. And there's actually a really cool tool in GIMP. I don't know if you have this in Photoshop, I haven't really used it. But it's this blend tool. So you've got all these different gradients you can use, there are loads of them. And I particularly like this one, and I'm just going to put it in a little spiral, I think I have it quite wise, yes. And I'm just going to put that in. The difficulty with this is making sure it doesn't look like that, because you can see that's just like one curl, so it's basically up to there. So that's going to have to be quite a lot bigger, and over to one side, because that's how it is in the picture. And I'm going to try and get a line straight. Thank you. That's too big. <laughs> this part is always really annoying. It's just trial and error. That's too small. That's... Ten hours later. <laughs> okay. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to see if I can move this layer over. No. <laughs> this is going to take a while. Okay, you know what? At this point, I don't fancy spending the rest of my life doing this, so I'm going to say. No. I'm going to say that'll do, really. Because yeah, it doesn't really look that much like that, but it's reasonably similar, I'm just taking the edges off. And the underlying concept is going to be the same anyway. So this really isn't so much making the artwork exactly, but it's an alternative version. Because I don't want to spend the rest of my life trying to get this blend exactly right, basically. But interestingly, you can see that this white here is more white than the internal strip here. So what I actually did with this, steady hands required, is I got a white airbrush, a really thin one, going to be thinner than that, and the airbrush along the white strip. It takes a while, but it looks great. I actually do this quite a lot with this blend. Why? <laughs> There's also in GIMP green and yellow versions of this blend. And I do use those a reasonable amount as well, but I definitely use the blue one most. I don't use the yellow one very much actually, but yeah, got like a bit of blue. I mean trying to airbrush all of this in one stroke is never going to happen. So do it in short segments because you'll save your sanity that way. And really at the end of the day when you've got loads of the other stuff in your image like on this one, people aren't going to notice it if it looks a bit wobbly. Or a bit odd because you've made little bits overlap and whatnot. 
You might notice if it's really wobbly, but so long as you follow this line reasonably accurately, you're gonna be fine. So again, don't worry overly about that, especially if you just do graphic design as a hobby, which is more of what I do, really. I mostly sort of just do concept images and then decide, oh, actually, you know what, that would be really good for an album cover or something, and decide to recreate it. So that's actually that about done, which is a lot faster than I usually do it. And I'm now going to create a layer because there are lots of these white dots. So I'm going to create a layer for that. And that's paintbrush with jitter again. That's too much jitter, actually. That's probably about right. So I probably want this under spiral. No, that wasn't it right. Let's have it over. So again, you just follow the curve of the spiral round. And it looks like that. And I'm pretty sure what I actually did in the original was I got an eraser. And I just took out a lot of the stuff in the center portion, sort of like that, because it creates it, it makes it look a bit busy, really. I'm just going to shrink the size of that so that it doesn't make things look distorted, because as you can see here, it kind of has. Now, I should probably mention at this point that the tools I use are all quite soft edge. Even erasers, I prefer to use soft edge rather than hard edge. And again, that's just personal preference. If you prefer hard edge, then hey, that's cool. But it also depends on what you want to use your tools for. If you're doing stuff like photo editing, which you can do in GIMP, you might be better off using hard edge tools for that because with photography, obviously, you want your lines and pictures to be really, really sharply in focus if you're serious about it, which is when you'll be doing photo editing, really. And if it, you're then using a soft edge tool, you could wreck that effect quite quickly and quite easily and not be able to recover that sharpness without editing the image all over again which you don't really want to do. So anyway, I think I've erased those dots to the extent I want. It looks a bit odd, like here, there's a bit of a flat edge, but with all the stuff underneath it, you probably aren't going to notice that. So I've got two layers of trees in this picture, so I'm going to have trees one, and these are the low spiral. So again, colour picker is my best friend, and that is the colour of my trees. Now, lots of people think that I make these trees by hand and it takes me hours. No, I use the tree brush. It's just easier. And then you can just turn the jitter off and put the trees around the spiral. And this is quite cool because everyone likes trees, right? And it just creates an interesting dynamic because I don't think many people do just randomly put trees in their pictures. I really wish everyone would keep zooming out on me. But yeah, trees are actually really common in my other images. And in my other art making videos, then you'll see that. And you'll see that even in artwork that looks, I suppose, more aggressive, there are often trees because they're just an interesting texture to add. So I've got another layer of trees here that are a darker colour, so let's get that. Not that it's actually really dark, but the brush is also a lot bigger. That big? Probably. Don't know if you can hear that truck in the background. Sorry about that. I think that brush is actually kind of too big. I'm going to shrink that a bit. And I think I've just put 
some random trees then. Look at why not. Uh, we're nearly done now. So I'm gonna do a little airbrush colour fade around the edge of my image. Shortcut and gimp, hold it, hold shift and then press the leg key and move it to the top of the bottom. Handy. And I actually did this in a nice light. It's not really a light blue, but it's blue nonetheless. And that, you can use the straight line tool for this as well. Saves your sanity. That's too small. And it just creates an interesting dynamic to your image and it helps people to almost like know where to look. Because you know when you see those like really complicated old paintings and you're sort of like, okay, which bit do I look at first? Doing this sort of thing kind of helps to avoid that because then people like don't look so much around the edge but look more around the middle. So I'm going to double this layer because the colour there is quite intense. Yeah, that looks more like it. And then the thing I need to do next is get the colour of this text. Okay, I'm actually going to zoom in on this and see if I can get it. There we go. And I'm going to get the text tool and use my absolute favourite font, I'm a nerd, to put the lettering in, if I can find it. Oh jeez, I've lost my font place. Here we go. And that was just in the corner here, and it's actually a pretty small text size. So I'm just going to type it in. Typos. Yeah, it was bigger than that though. Actually I can adjust the font size over here. That's quite handy if this little box here gets hidden, you can adjust it all over here instead. Wee, I thought about that. That's now too big. How's that look? A bit on the small side, maybe. Let's try 35. That's better. No, it's a bit close to the edge, so I'm just going to move that a little bit. And then what I did, and this is the problem I had earlier trying to colour pick this, so I got this colour, and that's because I did a bit of airbrushing around the text to make that glow as well, because I like glowy things, basically. <laughs> and this is one of those moments where you need a small airbrush and a steady hand. Which I actually have for once. That's too big. That's about right. And you just have to trace the text. That's closely as you can. So try and keep the tip of your mouse pointer, if you're using a mouse that is, like me, on the text as closely as you can. I try and trace the text with the tip of your mouse pointer. That's always the way I do it. There we go. K's are awkward for some reason. Again, because I'm using quite a fancy font here, if you use a different font like Sign Painter, this is probably easier because you don't have all the little serifs and curly bits. I don't know what those technical name for that is. But really, the text you want will vary on the image and the font you want will vary on the image. And again, because this colour isn't as intense as it is there, I'm going to copy this layer and turn the opacity down a bit, I think. Actually, I might copy it again. Okay, now we're just getting into stupid territory. That doesn't look like quite the same colour to me. But if I use the colour picker, then it will be. So I'm just going to have to accept here that computer knows best. <laughs> and I believe 
but that concludes the tutorial. This is how I made the artwork for my album. If you ignore that the spiral is slightly different, but it's my alternative version and it just gives you an idea of what the techniques are like. I hope you enjoyed this and if you're a fellow designer I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time.